All right. I think uh, we are recording right now. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining in today. Um, we are um, uh, in yet another Chaos Asia community meeting, uh, which is held every fortnight um, on a Thursday at 8 a.m. IST. I think that translates to um, around 3.30 um in UK time, but I'm really bad with time zones, so please don't take my word for it. Um, so essentially, it's IST 8 a.m. Uh, but um, <clears throat> if you all do not um, have the agenda doc, I shall share that in a bit. Um, and I'll add that on chat actually uh, in just a minute. But uh, this is the agenda for today. Um, and if you have any outstanding discussion items that you'd like to bring up during the call, please feel free to add it in this uh, document and it would be really helpful so that we can keep track of all the discussion items uh, that we are actually going through in this call. So just in like five minutes, uh, a couple of minutes, you should see the agenda doc on the call. Oh, sorry, on the chat. Um, so that being said, um, we're going to start off with the first agenda item, which is the metric standardization initiative. Um, so per the doodle poll that I had floated in the various Slack channels um, in the chaos Slack, uh, the first uh, monthly call or the first instance of our monthly call was held yesterday. It was attended by six folks. Um, and and the next call, in case you're interested in attending, is on the second uh, Wednesday of August, which is August 14th. Um, the, there's the calendar invite uh, there. I mean, you'll have to go to the chaos calendar, but I've linked it there. Um, but some of the items that we discussed, just for the awareness of everyone here, um, is for the sake of transparency and so that we're all on the same page, um, we gave uh, all the attendees of the call a 10,000 feet overview of the process. I've discussed this here, but in case you all want me to go through it again, I'm happy to. The second thing that we discussed is why is it important for us as a project to standardize the metric or and the metric model? Uh, now, this is, um, this is a thing that came up during our conversation yesterday and uh, of course, it's important from an adoption perspective, uh, but we haven't really got, we hadn't really gotten around to, um, you know, condensing our thoughts into like a blurb or a gist. And um, one of the outcomes that came from that call was we actually managed to have a solid discussion around this and um, we have a few points listed as to why this would be uh, this would be important for us going forward. And we're going to have a blog post uh, written by um, uh, two of the attendees, Sai Rahul, as well as uh, uh, Sean. And uh, we also um, have a potential chaos cast episode uh, coming up in August. Um, we have not decided the uh, speakers for that yet. But um, those are the two things. And of course, we need to socialize this um, thought process a little more, um, especially the why behind this whole standardization initiative. And also, you know, seek help in, um, seek feedback, sorry, seek feedback for the stand, um, for the various metrics and the metric models that we are going to convert to standards. Now, I know that there was a lot of information. Uh, so I'm going to pause here for a bit and see if there are questions for this one. My standard question, Divya. I'm yep. assuming most of this is quantitative, not qualitative. Yep, it is quantitative at the moment. But uh, if there are any, uh, like I did take a lot of the feedback that you gave during an earlier call to Elizabeth and unfortunately that did not um I mean we could not carry it to the metric models call but the next iteration 
continuation of the call i will uh, bring it up again uh, because i believe there was some travel upcoming travel that was coming up before, between the two calls that were there so i could not bring it up but i will bring the um, qualitative uh, bits up that you mentioned during the uh, during one of the previous calls in the met next instance of the metric model call um so the ones that are being formalized currently are definitely quantitative and not qualitative and this is unsurprising coming from uh, uh, many people coming from a non-humanities background <laughs> to some of these things. Uh, coming from a STEM and a quant background, it's very easy to overlook the qualitative side of things. It's understandable. Absolutely. I agree. And um, I did like the first first thing that when you when we discussed, I took it to Elizabeth because I did not know when the metric models call was. So uh, then there was there was a lot of travel. There was a lot of travel that came up and it fell under the radar for me. But I'm going to go back and uh, float this um, in the next metric models call, which is, I think, the next week, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a, it's a long term sort of discussion to have, Divya. It's not a it's not a rush kind of thing. I think it's just something for them to keep mindful of. Yep. Just, just to start the discussion, at least, like just to set the ball rolling, we sort of need to at least broach the topic during one of the calls, right? Like at least so that it's there in the back of their mind. Um, I'm gonna That's start. Right. At least, yeah. And 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 like I said, but if it if things get like you said before, if life gets in the way, not a big deal. This is more of a, you know, we we need to have more diverse. Uh, thought, I think. And uh, this is just a, a starting point to have that kind of discussion. So thank you for doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. Not a problem at all. Um, Anyone else have any thoughts? Uh, or can we move on to the next one? I'm going to take that as a no and move on to the next uh, um, agenda item, which is Iran collaboration opportunities. Um, before the call started, Roland and I were briefly talking about this. Roland, do you want to uh, talk about uh, the tangential uh, opportunities of interest that you uh, sort of posted about in uh, the chaos um, Slack channel? Because I think you'd be able to do more justice to it uh, than me talking. So do you want to go ahead and talk to it? Yeah, sure. So there are a couple of things that are that I've been working on. One is a working on a on a potential grant proposal for a systemic review of ticketing platforms for conferences for visibly for visible accessibility. And to give you an understanding of that, um, what actually happens is when you're trying to test visual accessibility for something, it can be very challenging, mainly because there are lots of different types of screen readers, uh, and there's lots of different types of OSs, and there's lots of types of web browsers. So if you're trying to buy a ticket online for a conference, or for an event, uh, it can be really challenging when you're paying for a credit card if you just happen to use a screen reader that no one no one has much use for. So, if you want to really understand, you know, is this ticketing platform accessible? You need to do a systematic review. And that's a broad sweeping kind of thing, and I thought it'd be really great to involve the blind and visually impaired community in you know advocating for this so the idea in the proposal is can we find one can we find you know someone who's a, a specialist in this area who could lead a group of community members who are all paid um and help train them up so that they can go through and do a test of different types of ticketing platforms with a variety of different uh, screen readers. 
So that was the first one. And I was just talking to some, I just came from another meeting with some conference organizers and they're all very quite keen to help out. So that's a very good sign. Um, the second idea that was had was creating a fellowship for a conference. And so I've applied to Linux Australia for a $500 grant and the grant would go straight to a, a fellowship we have one person in the community or, or, you know, people would put in an expression of interest and we'd pick one person in the community uh, from the blind or visually impaired community and get them to uh, give them a free ticket to our event and get them to write about their experiences. Did they feel welcome? Did, was, our, was our platform accessible? So this is more like a, a longitudinal across different days of our event you know how did we how did we find out maybe there's something that we thought we were doing right but in fact it was it was not very good so having someone who is you know the one of the most marginalized people in the community uh and getting them to come along and sort of report to us in a publicly in a public way in an open way uh, would be would be able to show us some accountability, and then we could take that information and apply it for next year. Um, anyone have any questions for Roland? Um, I do, but but I want to give others a chance to ask the questions before I go ahead. And just one last point, when I wrote uh, a review of the chaos, diversity, equity, inclusion mm. metric, mm. one of the things that I pointed out that it wasn't centering the most marginalized people in the, in the community. And the reason I sort of shared this one was because this does center the most marginalized people in the community because we're getting that, that community to do the report. Uh, could uh, could you sort of enter that in the document, uh, Roland? Because I did not get the entire thing. Uh, since there's a lot of construction noise in the background as well, could you just enter a blurb of what you just said? Um, I could uh, not get. I know because I'm, I'm feeding my son, so I, I can't type anything. Um, uh, no, no, not right away. Or maybe you could post this on the channel later on because I did not get the entire thing. I was trying to type it out, but I could sure, not get sure. the entire. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, the, the, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. So uh, one of the questions that I had for Roland specifically is um, uh, Chaos Africa um, is doing something really similar with their uh, disability inclusion initiative. Uh, they've only organized an event as far as I know. They've not done anything else. Uh, but um, is this something you would be uh, willing to explore as a partnership, um, Roland? Like, uh, I'm not I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. You can take your time and think. <laughs> uh, but is this something you'd be interested no, I'm in? I'm happy to chat. Yeah, I'm happy to chat. Um, I've actually have a couple of so I, I have a an organ. I have a sort of like a a boutique consultancy called practical diversity and inclusion okay and that that is basically just to generate funds for a fellowship a practical diversity and inclusion fellowship oh. i've just signed up to um fellows and their job is to they're based from nigeria working in belgium <laughs> and they they their the goal of their fellowship is actually to um run potentially see if we can run a diversity equity and inclusion uh conference in 2025 uh that okay. centers the most marginalized people and i think that would work really well so i'd be definitely happy to chat with um chaos africa on this right so i can i can take it upon myself to probably introduce you to youth um uh, who is the regional chapter lead uh, for Chaos Africa. She's also uh, doing a lot of fantastic work outside of uh, 
uh, being the regional lead. Uh, so I will introduce you to um, Ruth. Um, so that's that's on me. Um, another um question that I had for you is um and for the wider audience, of course, is that um. Like Chaos Africa, would there be interest to have a similar initiative? Um, that can I don't know if it makes sense to have a global one because we are not that well known yet. So I don't think it makes sense to start globally. But I'm open to any sort of uh, suggestions that you might have. If um you know there is interest around forming an initiative specific to um you know disability and much people like we, we're already doing chaos asia but under chaos asia would it be um sensible to have like an initiative dedicated to um sort of including um those with special needs and uh, disabilities like we have a working group for some, some other stuff in this um you know chapter I'm curious to hear what Yaya and Manuel say. Uh, so oh, like and Leon. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to ask, like, how, or like, on what the uh, parameters you would be, uh like collaborating with this community under care of nature. So, um, in my opinion, there are a few different ways we can collaborate. Um, so primarily integrating them into um our community is the first thing. So, collaboration doesn't necessarily mean we are going to partner with uh so i've i've mentioned that there are um a few um communities doing similar work so we are not going to explicitly partner with them i've reached out to a few um folks from the asian side uh who so, are not asian side yeah i've reached to a few asian folks within that community to see if they would be interested in um uh, helping out here and one of them did actually say they'd be able to and they'd be they want to uh given the um uh lack of um you know thought when it comes to including them into the open source ecosystem so uh one of the ways they want to participate is to see if they can actually work on anything um software related or even with respect to just like having um you know, a say in how uh, these metrics and metric models are developed from a qualitative or a quantitative perspective. Um, they basically want to embed themselves um, or rather the idea is to embed these folks into the community and uh, give them a, a pathway for exploration. Just like Roland mentioned with, um, uh, you know, the funding and the grant um, that they're working on. Um, and the part where they're trying to integrate, um, uh, you know, a disabled, a blind, uh, vision impaired person in into the conference uh, circuit so that they can provide feedback on the accessibility. Those, like just integrating them and figuring out the next steps would be um, actually our, um, you know, idea. Um, obviously, this could lead to more opportunities which we aren't able to see right now, but getting them here and getting them a place at the table is our very first idea. That is at least my first idea. I don't know if Roland uh, shares my views. I'll leave that to him, but uh, that is my idea. No, I think that's a good idea, Divya. And, and the way I see it is that that fellowship. So if I if I had... If I had a magic wand, I would say something like, you know, to to get a um a high rating in the chaos DEI metric, you've had to have received 
a good rating through a fellowship, a DEI fellowship for your event previously, for example. And this is the, the comment that I'd made before. And sort of separate to that, and I love that the comment that you made, Divya, we don't want to have a separate DEI sort of thing where we just invite people who have some sort of minoritized or marginalized sort of attribute. We do want to integrate them into the standard, you know, into Chaos Asia and Chaos Asia again is is kind of a, its own marginalized group because sometimes we can't get to um, do things that are uh, very UK and US based time zones. Um, so I think we, if I, if again, if I had a magic wand, it'd be like, I want to have some people who are interested in open source, um, who might be disabled or, or whatever, and I'd like to pay them. I'd have an honorarium to say, Hey, this is to make up for the opportunities that you've lost and assign them someone who understands what they need or is what is understands how to approach and how to support them, how to sponsor them uh, so that they can be integrated into the community. So this is very, very different from, hey, I'm going to ask you to do something. It takes a lot more proactiveness to be able to, to bring them on because, you know, when I, when I go into any DEI forum, and this has happened even here, uh, I have to assume that I'm not going to be welcomed and then I'm going to end up leaving, which it also happened. So, you know, if you're inviting someone in, the first thing they got to do is uh, check your credentials. They're going to check your credentials and say, is this person going to blind slide side me? And, you know, there are certain ways that you can go about showing that they're, they're, they're important, they're valuable and, um, you know, we're going to provide more opportunities to make up for ones that they've lost previously. So, you know, I do agree with you, Divya. I'd probably be saying that we probably want to do more than just ask. We want to give a, find a way for them to get a benefit out of it. That's like 70% benefit for them, 30% benefit for us. Yep, absolutely agree. But uh, just to pause your uh, Manuel, did that answer your question or do you need further clarification? Uh, yeah, I got it. That sounds welcoming. Uh, yeah, for inclusion. So I think we should go with it. Okay. Uh, Zhao, Leon, uh, any thoughts on this? Uh, I'm not too sure because I, I joined in late. Uh, but uh, it seems like a, like a good idea, but I'm not too sure. No worries. That's, that's completely okay to say. Um, anybody else have any thoughts before we go to the next uh, thing? So one of the action items potentially would be... Um, to sort of have uh, more conversations with uh, people around this. Um, of course, I'm going to introduce Roland to the Chaos Africa folks and see how it takes uh, takes on uh, shape from there. But I'm also going to reach out um, to folks I know uh, in the community um, and uh, speak with them, at, this, uh, at least in the Asian community, and see if they are really interested in this um initiative as well so that they can join maybe in the next couple of calls and maybe we can make accommodations for them and find a space for them to join uh but we should continue having these conversations and uh, uh potentially once we have um uh, we have some sort of um i don't know some sort of consensus trickling in as to how we can help this initiative take shape, we can formalize it on the charter itself. No, that's fine. Um, I was going to say, what was I going to say? I was going to say something along the lines of, 
you know, finding people who have been disillusioned with open source software and who have made complaints to previous events or to previous members of the open source community that they didn't feel welcome, those are the people I'd reach out to first. <clears throat> that might be very, very difficult to find, but if you could find those kind of people, um, that would be the people I'd reach out to first. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, uh, for, in a personal capacity, I have a, um, like I said, I reached out to folks in the Asian community and uh, uh, from the CNCF, Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group, but that's a very, 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 very small subset, and I realize it. Uh, so my aim with um, bringing, um, you know, Sandeep on would be to sort of understand what are the challenges they face in in the very first place uh because i uh i do not claim to have knowledge of that uh so one of the things that i'd want to understand is what are some of the challenges he has to face while not even let's not even talk about consciences and the big ticket events let's talk about attending meetings such as these right like as an asian as a um as a um, you know, person with special needs, what is what are some of the things you would need if you were to attend discussions like these, and what are the ways that we can make it easier for them to attend this, so that they can at least be part of a community that is working on these things, rather than us assuming that you know, okay, the meeting is you know absolutely convenient and uh, accessible to all um so that is the conversation i'm looking to uh, set the ball rolling on uh, rather than starting with some assumed knowledge that i have uh, so that was my intention with reaching out to sandeep and unfortunately he couldn't join us today but uh, my um intention is to um, at least have that conversation with him uh, and other members of the community in different forums to understand what we could do better. Uh, so that's pretty much it uh, with respect to the collaboration opportunity. And the last update um, that I have around collaboration opportunities is the fact that um, POSCAP 2024 um, is... Uh, has applied for badging. Um, we reached out to them earlier on um, during the starting phases of this um, uh, chapter and they've actually applied for um, badging uh, and, and, uh, and I think the badging process is in progress right now. I've not checked the latest status on this, but that is uh, that is a thing. And we're also going to have um, Force United uh, apply for badging as well for their uh, events that are taking place in India. So that is in the pipeline and I'm in conversation with them. So those are the two updates that I have other than the, um, you know, other than the one suggestion by Roland. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um. I'm just going to throw open the floor to see if we have any more discussion points before we close for the day. Okay, so nothing from. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I just interrupted you. Uh, do you have anything, Roland? I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying I've got nothing to say uh, on camera. <laughs> I'm happy to catch a uh, chat after. Sure. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it from um, this meeting. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you folks around in the next iteration of the meeting. Thank you for joining in, everyone. And We'll see you around on Slack. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you.